Hey guys, it's MJ the Student Actuary, and in this video we're talking subject CT2, Chapter 5. Now in the previous video, I went into quite a long explanation between a forward and a future contract, so if you're interested on that, go check out that video. This video is going to be focusing around what an option is, and if we've got time, I might even talk about a swap, or I might make a separate video on it. Let's see how we go. So, the, physical, well, the definition for an option is, an option gives an investor the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell a specified asset on a specified future date. But all the information is contained in that word option. I have the option. If I come to you and I say, do you want apples or do you want oranges? You have the option to either take the orange or to take the apple. When it comes to the financial world, we create these options. And what it comes, they, they can be used to hedge or they can be used to speculate. Uh, let me give you a quick little example. Let's say we have a business. Um, what should our business be? Our business is selling shoes. Let's say we're selling shoes and We've got a little factory going and there's people getting the leather in and they're knitting the shoes up and it's, it's going great. And the value of the company is at 1 million, uh, 1 million rand. And what we do is we go to an investor and we tell that investor that we will give them an option to buy this business at 1.5 million rand. So at half a million more. And what we say to the investor is that pay us a premium now and we will create this contract. And what that means is that if the price of the company stays at 1 million or only goes up to 1.4 million in the following year, then that option kind of becomes worthless in the sense that why should I buy it at 1.5 million when I can rather just go buy it on the market for 1.4 where the option makes sense is let's say the shoe company does phenomenally well and it is now valued at 2 million rand. The investor can then exercise his option, his option to buy because he's locked in the price at 1.5 million. So he then goes and he says, okay, I want to buy the shoe factory at 1.5 million. Or he can take this option and sell it to another investor who's interested in the shoe factory and make 500,000 Rand on that deal because he set the price at 1.5 million and the actual price of the asset now is 2 million and you can see there's a half a million difference between it. Now the important thing to realize is that it gives the investor the right but not the obligation. So in this instance the, the, the investor who has this option has got an unlimited upside risk. So if it's for 2 million, he makes half a million. If it's for 3 million, he makes 1.5 million. If it's for 4 million, he makes 2.5 million. You can see, no matter, and there's, there's no limit on how well the shoe factory could do. For all we know, Victoria Beckham could buy the shoes. She's walking down the street. People see that shoes. Everybody wants that shoe. It becomes the new fashionable trend, and the value could skyrocket. So the investor has unlimited upside potential. It's, it's amazing. And at the same time, if the shoe factory crashes or burns or uh, the shoes nobody likes them and the company becomes absolutely worthless, the investor doesn't have to exercise the right to purchase the shoe factory. And so his downside risk is limited. Now, this sounds a little bit too good to be true. You've got all the, the benefits of getting the upside, but your downside is, is limited in the sense that you don't lose money after you've bought an option. But this is where the key thing comes in, is that the option, no one's just going to write an option for you free of charge. The, the shoe shop owner or the current business owner isn't just going to give you an option out of the goodness of his heart. In return, he wants something known as a premium. And in this case, I mean, the premium could be 100,000 Rand. So the shareholder says, okay, I'm going to give 100,000 Rand to the shoe guy and this is going to therefore allow me to have this option which I can then exercise. 
the option normally has an expiry date. So it might only be for one year. So after one year, if the value of the, the shoe factory is not greater than 1.5 million, it means you cannot exercise the option and the share the investor has lost that 100,000. So that is the, the downside of options is that you do have to pay a premium for them. And when an option is built around the idea of purchasing an asset, we call that a call option. So a call option gives you the ability to buy an asset. Now there's something else known as a put option. So a put option gives the holder the right, but not the obligation to sell an asset at a specific price within a certain time period. So our shoe shop factory owner could approach an investor and say, hey, why don't I buy a put option from you? So what I will do, I will give you the investor a bunch of money, let's call it the premium, in exchange for this contract, which gives me the right but not the obligation to sell my shoe factory at a specific price. So let's say again at 1.5 million. And what happens now is that let's say I'm the shoe shop owner and my company does very well, Victoria Beckham's wearing it and the value of the company is at 3 million. Then I'm basically going to tear up that put option and say, you know what, I don't need it. My company is worth much more selling it on the open market for 3 million than exercising that option. However, if something bad happens to my shoe factory, it burns down or nobody wants the shoes and it goes to say a value of just 100,000, I can then go to that investor and exercise this right to say, hey, we agreed that you would buy this shoe factory at 1.5 million. I'm exercising that right. Give me the money. Here are the keys to the factory. And how this works, by buying a put option, I now, what I still have is I have this protection. If, if my company becomes worth lots and lots and lots of money, I can still benefit from all of that, but I've reduced the downside risk. So if my company becomes worthless, I can now exercise this put option and make sure I get uh, a certain amount back. Although in this instance, an investor is gonna be very hesitant in order to, to sell you this, this type of deal unless you pay him a significantly high enough premium. And that's where a lot of these exchanges make their money is that they charge quite a bit for these premiums. And one way you can make money as an exchange is you sell a call option and you sell a put option and you put a little bit of admin fees in that premium amount, which means no matter if the shoe factory goes up or if the shoe factory goes down, you just locking in the premium amount. And this is where a lot of exchanges uh, make their money. But that is um, option contracts. I mean, this has just been an audio talk about a, a simple example. I have made um, videos on options. I think it's under the playlist for CA1. If you are interested in this stuff, go check out those videos to get a better understanding. I will put a description in I'll, sorry, I will put a link in the description below. Thanks so much for listening, guys. Cheers.